Hi, this is Randy Wyckoff, the Dean of the College of Public Health, East Tennessee State University. And I'm pleased to provide the COVID-19 pandemic update with data accurate through December 2nd, 2021. <clears throat> Today, I'm gonna to talk about news <clears throat> of the last week, uh, specifically, what do we know about the Omicron variant, as well as what's going on in the US right now in terms of are we seeing a resurgence and how should we interpret the ongoing legal actions? In terms of the Omicron variant, um, it's this is the scientific recognition of it. Um, it's named Omicron because that's the process that the World Health Organization has. The last named one was Mu uh, right here. They skipped over Nu because it sounds like a new variant. They don't want to use that. And then she, or however it's pronounced, is a common last name. So they skipped that one, went right to Omicron. It was first reported in South Africa, reported on the 24th, I think recognized on November 9th. So it's a very new variant. It was recognized in Gauteng province, which is where Johannesburg, Pretoria, Soweto, many of the names that we recognize in South Africa are located. South Africa is seeing a spike in cases, as you can see here, a recent spike, though not as big as the three previous spikes but not yet seeing a spike in deaths. It's classified as a variant of concern by the World Health Organization. That's their second highest category. And it's been reported now to represent the majority of SARS-CoV-2 isolates in South Africa. It appears to be spreading around the world uh, in at least two dozen countries, and at least one case has been reported in the US. Now, as you'll recall, we've talked about how variants form before. Basically, the virus comes into the body, it replicates, it circulates, it goes around whatever it's going to do, and then it mutates, it changes a little bit. And the virus that comes out of the body can look a little bit different than the one that went in. Now, most of the time that doesn't matter unless it affects one of three things. Transmissibility, the ability of the virus to go from one person to another. Lethality, how serious the disease the virus causes. And then susceptibility, which is not a great word, but does the virus, does it evade our immune system? So in every case, the new variant can be less, same, or more. So what does it look like for transmissibility for the Omicron variant? The best data right now probably suggests that it's more transmissible than the Delta agent, though it's still premature. The reason I say that is if you look at this, this is in South Africa, and it's the, sort of the proportion of all the recognized viral variants. And so for much of the last part of 2020, the beginning of 2021, it was the beta variant. Then you see the Delta variant, but then look very, very quickly, the Omicron variant has become the majority. And so anytime a viral variant becomes the most common one, what you know is it either is more transmissible or it's somehow hitting a new population. In the absence of knowing if it's hitting a new population, I think we have to conclude, at least at this point with what we've seen in South Africa, that it's probably more transmissible. And this is a report that they have issued suggesting that the Omicron variant probably has become the dominant variant quicker than either the beta or the Delta variant. In terms of lethality, how serious it is, uh, there were some preliminary reports from South Africa that suggested that it wasn't causing serious illness, but I think we have to be very, very cautious in interpreting that because who are the people likely to have be tested for their variant? Those are folks who have access to the health system who are also folks who are more likely to be vaccinated. And we know vaccinated folks are more likely to have milder disease. Only 24% of the people in South Africa are vaccinated. So we'll have to wait and see what happens when the Omicron variant starts appearing in groups that are not yet vaccinated. But at this point, it's really too early to tell. In terms of whether it evades the immune system or not, there was some concern because the spike protein on the Omicron variant has 32 mutations, some of which have been associated with increased uh, escape of the immune system. But also remember, if there's too many mutations, then it won't attach to the host cell. So at this point, we really don't know. It's too early to tell. 
So, you know, as we've said many times, new variants are almost inevitable as long as there are large groups of unvaccinated people that are exposed to the virus. And at this point, I'm told that less than 10 percent of people in sub-Saharan Africa have been vaccinated. So it's almost inevitable, whether it's from sub-Saharan Africa or Asia or the United States or somewhere else, new variants will continue to occur. Now, this new one was identified in South Africa, but that doesn't mean it necessarily evolved there. It could have moved into South Africa from somewhere else, just as it's moved from South Africa to other places. It'll probably take several weeks at least until we know the transmissibility and the lethality of the variant, nor the extent to which it does or does not evade our immune system. As with all other known variants, the best protection that we have is vaccination, along with masking and efforts to avoid contact. And as always, please remember that when you're making your own risk benefit decisions about whether to wear a mask or get vaccinated, please take into account the risks that other people are taking as well, especially those populations at highest risk. So let's assume for a moment that Omicron doesn't represent a significant new risk. It may, but we don't know yet. <clears throat> but even if it doesn't, there's already a resurgence in the United States of COVID cases and hospitalizations. And that brings us to our second issue. Are we seeing a resurgence? And now you know we are. So if you look at daily cases, you can see that there was this tiny spike uh, not as big as the previous two spikes, but again, the number of daily cases that we're seeing is still greater than at any time, except the two big spikes that we had. We're not seeing the same thing with deaths, but worrisomely, uh, by the way, we've had eight, over 800,000 deaths now in the United States. Worrisomely, we are seeing an uptick in hospitalizations, and that's always the early indicator of, of the risk of future death. Both this is national data and we're seeing the same thing locally in the ballot health system. So yes, I think it's fair to say we are seeing a resurgence, but how big it's going to be or how serious we don't know. As always, it's occurring in different places at different times. The final issue I want to address is how should we interpret the ongoing legal action? There's a lot of talk now about federal courts saying one thing or blocking one thing. It's really, these are really important legal decisions. And they relate to who has a right to issue a mandate either in favor of or against vaccinations or masks. Is it federal government? Is it state government? Is it local government? Do any of these actions impact of previous law like the Americans with Disabilities Act? These are really important decisions that have an implication for public health well beyond COVID. And it's very important that the courts take their time and take the right decisions as they as they come up. These are important decisions about who has the right or no right to issue a mandate. But there is something that these decisions are not. These decisions are not a judgment of whether the vaccines work or whether masks work. All right. These are decisions that are very important, but they relate to who has the right to issue a mandate. The data on vaccines and masks remains unchanged. And probably the greatest example of that is again from Ballot Health and thanks them for this incredibly valuable information. Currently 91% of the hospitalized COVID patients in the ballot system are not fully vaccinated. But look at these next two numbers. Of 52 patients in the ICU, none are fully vaccinated. And of 36 patients who are intubated, none are fully vaccinated. So it's very important that we pay attention to these court decisions because they are important and they need to take their time and do them well. But what they are not saying is whether vaccines or masks work. So what do we know about the Omicron variant? It's a new variant. We don't know yet its transmissibility, its lethality, or its susceptibility to our immune system. It appears that there is a resurgence, so perhaps not as large as some of the previous ones, at least not yet. And there are very important ongoing legal actions that we'll watch with great interest, but we will recognize that they are not weighing in on the value of vaccines or masks. They're weighing in on the authority to issue mandates. There's a great deal more information about COVID-19 on the College of Public Health website. If you know anyone who'd like to be added to this mailing list, or if you're sharing this with other people, please give them the option of signing up for these, uh, these weekly updates. As always, thanks to Dara Young for editing, producing, and posting this video. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I answer a number of questions offline. I try to address questions in the weekly update if they're appropriate for a broader audience. I look forward to hearing from you. Until next week, please be well. Thank you.